Good afternoon, this is John coming at you live from your Woodcraft Spokane store. Uh, today we're going to talk uh, about a few different things. Uh, these will, this will probably be mainly of interest to the pin turners of, uh, that we have out there. And I know that there's a whole bunch of you because you're always coming in the store. So I know that there's a bunch of pin turners out there. So today's demonstration or presentation might be a better word for it, I suppose will be about modifying existing pin kits. Now, what do we mean by modifying a pin kit? Uh, essentially, what we're talking about is taking a pin kit, doing something to it that makes it look brand new or completely different. Uh, some of these uh, modifications that we're going to talk about today uh, are fairly simple to do. Some are a little bit more complicated, uh, and some are just downright difficult. Uh, but uh, as you progress through them, uh, you'll figure out how it all works, and, uh, and you'll, you'll get it in no time at all. Okay? So let's start off with one of the basic pins, which is the lowly little slim line. Now this is one of the easiest pins there is to make. Uh, there's not much to it. You know, you have an upper part, you have the lower part, you got a center band, a mechanism. It's a very basic little pin. They're very simple to make. This is what most people start with uh, when they get into pin turning is the slim line. And there's a reason for that. It's because it's simple to make, it's fairly inexpensive to purchase. Uh, they're widely available. They come in a lot of different platings. And uh, it's just a really good kit to start with. But after a while, eh, you know, like anything else, after a while, you can get a little tired of just your plain, basic, everyday little slimline pen. So what can you do to make it look different? You make it in one piece. Rather than having a break in the middle where your center band would be, you've got one solid tube running the entire length. That's a really simple modification to do. It does require an extra tube, or at least a piece of a tube on the inside to support the material out here at the very end where your, your tip will, will be. Uh, and as you can see, it's the same basic assembly. We've got the tip out here, we've got the mechanism, the standard slimline pin tube, and it just slides up inside the other one just like so. To change that ink, of course, you just pull it out, unscrew the ink fill, put a new one in, slide it back together. A fairly simple modification to do, but it really, oops, sorry, I got a little too high with my, with my examples here. Uh, Joel's making faces at me over on the other side of the camera. No, don't do that. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so you can see that you have your standard slim line on the left. I guess this would be your right. Uh, and then the one piece uh, in the other hand. Uh, very simple modification to do, but really makes a lot of difference in the way your pen looks. Now. Let's talk about the cigar pen. The cigar pen, for a long time, has been pretty much my favorite of the ballpoint pen kits. I think it's a nice size. The, the components in the kit are very nice. It goes together nicely. And it's just, in my opinion, just a very nice kit. You'll find it in lots of different platings. Uh, from the black enamel, which I think is really sharp looking, to gold, chrome, uh, platinum, combinations thereof. Uh, there are some that have decorative elements on them. Uh, so there's, there's a, a nice variety of the basic cigar pen. I think this is a great pen. Uh, it's very simple to build. Uh, the, it goes together nicely. It's simple to turn. Just an all around nice pen. Did I mention this is one of my favorite ballpoint pen kits? Uh, it is an, it, it's just, I, I just, there's just something about it that I really, really like. And I've used them for a long, long time. And one day I got to thinking, as I looked at a one-piece slimline pen, I got to thinking, you know, there's got to be a way to modify 
a cigar pen into one piece. And so I started playing around with some ideas. I did some sketches, which I highly recommend uh, for you know, getting ideas about modifications and seeing what you think will or will not work. Uh, and I came up with an idea. So what I'd like to show you is standard cigar pen and a standard cigar pen without a blank. Now I do this, yeah, come on in, Joel. Try to keep this right where you can get a good look at it. A standard cigar pen uh, has two tubes, obviously, uh, and you've got a longer tube for the lower end, and you have a shorter tube up at the upper end, and then you have a tube that goes down inside this one, which is actually what grabs the mechanism and allows you to turn the mechanism to advance and retract your ink fill, all right? So your mechanism actually screws onto uh, a little uh, fitting right here at this end of the lower tube. And I thought, you know, there must be a way that we can modify that. And so this is what I came up with. So here's a couple of examples of the one-piece cigar pen. Uh, I, I came up with this idea, oh my goodness, it's been 10, 12 years ago, I guess now, uh, and I really, really like it. I think it takes uh, a good-looking pen. There's your standard one right next to a, a single piece. I think it takes a, a good-looking pen and just kind of makes it look a little classier, I think. Uh, I really like getting rid of that center band. I like the feel of it uh, because in your hand, that center band kind of, am I keeping it in the right spot there, Joel? Okay. Uh, it, it, the center band can kind of rub, you know, kind of sit right there in your hand. And while that's certainly not a bad thing, I think it's a little more comfortable without that. And so I figured out a way to modify the whole thing so that I can use one tube and fit everything up inside. You coming in closer there, Joel? Now, if you look at this, one thing that will strike you right off the bat is that this is very similar to the way a slimline modification looks on the inside. It's, it, it's modified so that everything can slide up inside that one tube. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go into an awful lot of detail about how this works. Uh, just suffice it to say that you have to modify that fitting in there so that it fits up inside. There are some other things that you need to do with tubes and so forth, but I'm not going to go into an awful lot of detail and bore everybody since I don't have anything to actually show you how that works. But um, that is how I took the w standard cigar pen and turned it into a single barrel. And I think it just really makes for a classy looking pen. Uh, I, it's, it's, not as, it's not as heavy as it might look. Um, and you can give it, you know, this one has a little bit more uh, of a rounded contour to it than the purple one here. The purple one is a little straighter. You can do whatever you want to. It gives you a little more freedom in the shape of the pen, since you're not dependent on where that center band is. You know, you don't have that center band bushing to worry about and, you know, trying to match up diameters and all that. You can just kind of, so it gives you a little bit more freedom to play with the design of the pen. And I think that's one of the important things to keep in mind about modifying pen kits, is that it just gives you a little bit more freedom in your design, okay? Another thing I did with the cigar pen in a single barrel was I just got a wild hair one day uh, and decided, you know, let's try to do what's been called a closed end. Now, doing a closed end cigar pen, it basically is the same thing. It's been modified on the inside, but you'll notice that it is solid wood all the way around the end. There's no clip on it. 
There's no finial out here at the end. It's just solid wood. Now, when you start doing pins like this, now you're looking at having to have special mandrels, uh, perhaps a homemade mandrel uh, that can hold that solid body uh, securely while you're trying to turn it. Uh, especially when you're out here at the very end, uh, when you're trying to work that closed end and you have no support from your live center uh, for the blank. Uh, you don't want it doing one of these numbers. You know, we've all been there and seen that kind of thing. Uh, so you want to try to avoid that. But this was kind of an extension. This was kind of an experiment on my part just to see if I could do it. Uh, I've never done another one, but uh, it, it, it's kind of cool. It was fun. It's a good, good challenge. So there's that one. So there's, there's a little bit about modifying cigar pens. Joel, have we had any questions yet? No questions. All right. Well, then in that case, we are just simply going to move right along. And we're going to talk now about roller balls. My favorite, all-time favorite roller ball kit, and fountain pen kit for that matter, is the Navigator from Woodcraft. It's also known as the Baron from uh, some other suppliers. Uh, Arizona Silhouette, for instance, sells it as the Baron. Uh, I think that uh, Beartooth Woods might sell it as the Baron. But Woodcraft sells it as the Navigator. We have it in several different platings. We have it in both the rollerball style as well as the fountain pen kit. It's a great kit. The components of the kit are very nice. They're a nice weight. The platings are always really nice. It's a nice size, a nice weight. There's really nothing about this kit that I do not like. I think this is one of the best kits I've ever used. But there are some things that you can do with the kit to make it just a little bit different. And that's what we're going to kind of cover now. So let me show you, first of all, let me kind of put a couple of mismatched pieces together, if you don't mind. This is what a standard navigator looks like in chrome. This is the roller ball, as you can see by the, the nib. But this is the roller ball kit. You've got a metal finial with a black jewel in it. You've got a very nice looking clip, uh, which is nice and heavy. There's enough tension on it to hold it securely in your shirt pocket. And it is what they refer to as a posting pin. So you have a, the, and if you're not familiar with the term, this piece right here is called a post. And if you have a set of threads right here, that is referred to as a posting pin. These threads at this end are the same as the threads at this end, which allows the cap to then screw onto the post and it becomes a posting pin and it extends the length of the pen a little bit, and it gives it a little bit more balance. So I prefer posting pins as opposed to non-posting. There are some rollerball and fountain pen kits out there that are non-posting. A lot of them are really nice kits, don't get me wrong, but I like ones that post because I think there's a little more balance to it that way. So this is what a standard navigator pen looks like. So. What do we do to make it different? Well, probably one of the most popular things to do as far as a modification of a navigator or a lot of other roller balls, you can do this with, with more than just the navigator, uh, but the navigator is one that I particularly like, so that's what I have to show you today. This is what they refer to as a closed end pen. Just like with the cigar pen that we talked about a minute ago, if I hold this up and show it to you, you will see the difference in the end here. Instead of a metal post with some threaded part to it, we now have all solid wood. That is the closed end. Now obviously, you're not using a standard pen turner's mandrel at this point. You are using what's referred to as a closed end mandrel. Now these can be uh, uh, obtained commercially. You can make your own. I've done both. You can get some that uh, will insert into the tube and then you use a couple of wrenches to, to tighten it up and the, 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 the 
and mandrel will kind of expand inside the tube and get a really good solid grip on it. That's actually the kind that I primarily use. There are some that will have like a little notch cut in it and a pin. Those are typically called, are you ready for this? Pin chucks. Uh, and, and when you insert it, you give it a little twist. That pin kind of goes off center from in that notch and it provides enough pressure on both sides of the, the, the tube inside uh, to give it enough force to be able to turn. It's fairly efficient, they're fairly simple. I've made several of my own, um, but for the cost that you can find them for, it's almost not worth uh, trying to make your own. But it is a fun little project, and uh, I would recommend that you try that at some point. Uh, so this is your basic closed end pen. It's, you know, it's going to, to screw right back on and go right back together, lickety split. So you can see that's your closed end pen. Now, what else can you do? Well, going back to my navigator kit here, we have the standard finial with the black jewel in it. Really nice looking. Nope, no, uh, it's not offensive at all. It doesn't bother me at all. But I thought, you know, what can I do to change that? How can I make that different? How can I make it a little more uniform in appearance? So what I came up with, and I'm certainly not the first one or only one to have ever done this, uh, and I don't claim to be and never would, but I turned my own out of a little piece of wood from the same blank. And you can see that it's, uh, it's just basically the same diameter. The clip is still there. Uh, it's glued in place now. Uh, because there's really no, you can't, you know, you can't, I suppose if you were extremely, extremely careful to turn it to exactly the right diameter, you could turn it to a diameter that you could then press in. I thought, you know, to make it a little bit easier, and because wood can expand and contract, I thought, you know, let's turn it to a size that we can actually glue it into place. And so that's what I did here. Just used a little bit of epoxy and glued that into place. And you can see it holds the clip very securely. It doesn't want to come apart. Uh, and that's a nice little modification to it. The nice thing about using the same type of wood is that if I wanted to put this cap on this pin with the closed end, voila, no problem. No problem. So now you have uh, almost a double closed end pin. But, not to be outdone, and I'm trying to make sure I get these right back in the, there we go. You can actually do a true closed end pen on both ends. The cap is turned just like the body. You'd have a special closed end mandrel sized to fit the tube of the cap. You turn it, sand it, polish it, put a finish on it, just like you would any other pen project, and then you do the same thing with the body of the pen. Now, when I do a closed end like this, I like to make the pen a little bit longer. And I'm trying to hold these so I can make sure Joel can get it in, in frame here. Uh, I like to make them just a little bit longer because this, this making your pen this way it is a lot lighter. I mean, there's a, a, a noticeable difference in the weight of these. And so to, to keep the balance of the pen, because you're not, you know, obviously you can't post the cap on there, uh, but to, to keep the balance of the pen the way it should be, I make it just a little bit longer so it comes out a little bit further and that helps to keep the balance in the right place. Uh, it makes it comfortable to write with. Again, it's fairly lightweight, but that is your double closed end pen. Easy project to make. Once you've done a few, you'll get the hang of it. Not terribly difficult, uh, but a little bit more challenging than, say, the slimline. One other thing that I would like to mention, uh, let me go back to this particular pen for just a moment. 
if you are making a fountain pen, okay, this is real important to keep in mind. If you're making a fountain pen and you're going to glue this little piece in, you're going to make this wooden finial and glue it into your upper tube, do yourself a favor. Please don't ask me how I know this, but, but, <laughs> but do yourself a favor and do not use CA glue to glue that finial into place when you're doing a fountain pen. The off-gassing from CA glue can and usually will result in uh, causing corrosion on that fountain pen nib. You don't want to have that happen. So do yourself a favor, use just a little, a little tiny bit of epoxy glue. It'll work just as well, almost as quickly, especially if you're using the five minute stuff uh, and you won't have to worry about it corroding the, the nib of your fountain pen. Just a friendly little tip from me to you. So Joel, any questions on the, uh, the other side there? Anything at all? No questions. All right. Well, folks, that's about all I have for you this afternoon. Uh, I'm very glad that you tuned in. The video will eventually end up on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not familiar with that already, uh, Woodcraft Spokane does have its own YouTube channel. There are literally dozens of videos on there covering all kinds of topics related to woodworking. So please uh, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, Keep an eye on our, our uh, Facebook page. I wish you all a very pleasant afternoon. Thank you.